Another question about the main purpose, so let's just dive right in, try to think about what we're reading, but let's not get too carried away with the details. Studying late 19th and early 20th century artifacts from an agriculture and domestic site in Texas, archaeologist Diana O. Fluelin found that black women employed as farm workers utilized hook and eye closures to fashion their clothes at the waist, giving themselves a silhouette similar to the one that was popular in contemporary fashion and typically achieved through more restrictive garments such as corsets. Wow, that's a long sentence. But what I got out of it is black women and the farms are, where is it, similar to... I guess, other things. They're similar to something. Uh, Fluelin argues that this sartorial practice shows that these women balanced hegemonic ideals of femininity with the requirements of their physically demanding occupation. Tough, tough vocab. Uh, let me talk about some words here. I don't think you need to know them in order to get this. Sartorial uh, just means uh, something has to do with clothes. It's a very specific word. It just means like it's a, it has to do with what you wear, what the clothes you have. So a sartorial practice is a practice involving clothes. So it's one of those words that seems like it's important, but it's just saying what we already know. We're talking about clothes. Um, here, hegemonic uh, means kind of like almost like something is dominating um, and in controlling. So um, I don't think it really adds anything here either, but it is a word that maybe scares you. So I think those two words make a big deal, uh, uh, you know, seem to kind of matter because we get to the end there. But um, the word that really matters to me and all of that is balanced, right? They balance things. They balance femininity with their job. Cool. All right. Well, let's, I wouldn't even do this much work if I were reading, by the way. I just go right to the, the, the choices. Uh, a, uh, the purpose of the text is to describe an unexpected discovery. That's a strong word. Uh, that altered a researcher's view of how rapidly, that's a strong word, fashions among black female farm workers in late 19th and early 20th century Texas changed during the period. Well, the end looks fine to me, right? They're talking about black female farm workers. They're talking about that time period. They're talking about maybe changes a little bit. But honestly, uh, unexpected, it needs to be surprising, right? So that is that idea stated somewhere in this passage? Uh, I don't think so. They're, she's talking about what they used. They're, it's a similarity. Uh, they're balancing things, but nothing says surprising. Plus, rap rapidly involves the idea of time, which we know is a common feature of wrong answer choices. Does the passage also talk about time passing, things changing? It's talking about the past. It's talking about a specific era of the past, but it doesn't seem that it's changing. It just seems that they're stating what it was. It was similar at this time to something, uh, to clothes in a different uh, part of society, but it's not saying that there's a, a rapid change of any kind. So there's a lot about this choice that I would notice instantly and that that would I would help to help me understand the passage better and cross out the choice. So uh, remember, strong words can appear in the passage. They can also appear in the answer choices. And that's why I find that evaluating the answer choices is usually so much easier than evaluating the passage because the choices are shorter and we can notice the stronger words more easily. Uh, B, to discuss research that investigated ways the ways in which black female farm workers in late 19th and early 20th century Texas used fashion practices to resist traditional gender ideals. Well, resist is another strong word, right? So here, I, I, that's got a negative connotation, right? You're fighting against something. But yet the word that we had in the passage that, that kind of maybe goes with that is the word balance, right? Balance is much more positive, right? Maybe there's some good in the bad, but if you're balancing, you're kind of dealing with two things and trying to keep them in, in uh, a symmetry of some kind, but resisting is you're fighting against it. So that just seems like the wrong connotation. Uh, so um, maybe the rest of it is true, but yeah, resist is such a strong word that it stands out to me. And this is why for a lot of answer choices, we're not so much interested in the parts of the choice that are correct. We're interested in the parts of the choice that are incorrect. Because uh, as I like to say, if 90% of a choice is correct, but 10% is incorrect, is wrong, it's the 10% that makes it 100% wrong, right? So your brain really likes the 90% that's right, but you have to train your brain to look for the 10% that's wrong because that's going to make the entire thing wrong. Let's look at C. To eval evaluate a scholarly work that offers explanations for the impact of urban fashion ideals on black female farm workers in late 19th and early 20th century Texas. You can see this this part about Texas and the time period keeps repeating, right? It's, it's filler. It's what they say about that that matters. So are they evaluating a scholarly work? I don't know. That seems kind of strong in its own way. And the scholarly work has to offer explanations for the impact of urban fashion ideals on black female farm workers. So I don't know. Offers explanations for the impact. This just seems like filler too. So I don't know. Maybe it's evaluating it. It doesn't seem to be saying whether um, Ayana is good or bad. 
So I don't, I don't know. An evaluation to me seems like we would say like, oh, the research that she did was good. The research that she did was wrong. But I don't think we're getting that. It just seems like a statement of fact. Um, and does her work offer explanations for the impact? Well, I don't even know what that means. Does it talk about the impact? I don't know. It just says that they balance things, I guess. I don't know if that's an impact. Is it explaining what they're doing? Maybe that's the explanation is that they, what the impact was that they wore these certain clothes. The, the explanation is that they were trying to balance things. I'm genuinely confused by this choice. So I would have to look at D. I don't know. Um, D, to summarize the findings of a study. Well, summarize is weaker than evaluate. Summarize the findings of a study that explored factors influencing a fashion practice among black female farm workers in late 19th and early 20th century Texas. Okay. So uh, I could turn this into a question. What are the factors influencing these workers? Well, if I go to the passage, uh, the factors are it was a popular fashion. Um, so they were influenced. That's one factor is that it was just popular. And then another two factors are down here, right? That they had to balance femininity with their physically demanding occupation. So those are other factors that uh, um, uh, influenced the fashion practice of what these black farm workers wore. So I don't know. I like D here. I, I'm probably like 80% sure that it's D. So this might be a question where I would come back and just kind of see, like, maybe I'm missing something, but I feel like evaluate is very strong. It doesn't seem like the purpose of this text is to say whether Ayana Fluellen is right or wrong. It seems to be about just saying, here's what Ayana found about these farm workers. It's not saying good, bad, it's just saying facts. So to me, that is a summary. That is not an evaluation. Evaluation seems like I would need to say a positive or negative connotation. Uh, I will say though, so D is the right answer, by the way, but I will say that normally I do not really pay attention to those verbs that start off answer choices because in most cases they don't matter. So uh, a lot of people really just zoom in on those and are just like, oh my God, that's exactly what I need to focus on. That, that piece matters. But mo notice that in choices A and B, it also doesn't really do much, right? Describe, discuss. As soon as you mention something, you're describing it. As soon as you mention something, you are discussing it. So those are not words that are hard to uh, justify. So most of the time, those first verbs are just so bland and, and um, unhelpful that I don't even pay attention to them. But other people really do. But I would say just not many of those words are going to matter, though the word evaluate does have an extra little something. And so in this case, I do think it mattered.